Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be talking about trading measured move corrections. And it's it's kind of a nice piggyback off of the video that we did not too long ago about going over legs and, and how I determine a leg. So when we're looking at this, this is something that happened on the S&P not too long ago. But when we have these corrective phases that take place, whenever there's a corrective phase of, of decent substance that's obvious from top to bottom or potentially even from here, to hear given how aggressive it was. These usually show back up later in time and we can utilize these to our advantage assuming that the overall prevailing trend is still intact. In this case if we zoom out a little bit we can see that there is a very nice well established bull trend to the upside. We've got you know maybe a small little range going on all things considered but for the most part the trend is still firmly up going into that range. Now, as we go into that range, the market had a very aggressive pullback to start things off. And initially, it was actually over here, this guy right over there. Now, that was the first pullback, but it created up to another new high. And when the market started rotating down, you'll notice what they did around this zone. There was still some very nice responsive bullishness, but it did end up breaking down, creating the secondary level. And this kind of goes to one of the other videos that we talk about with double value pullbacks. The market essentially just kind of doubled up its pullback and created a larger grown up pullback, if you will. Later on, after rallying back up to a new high, we see a rinse and repeat of the same situation, but this time they hold it perfectly. And then we roll back over to a lower high, holding that inside swing and churning all the way back down again, creating yet again another reason to believe that the market is going to come in with measured move precision. And sure enough, they did. Now, in terms of these areas, how, how would you approach these reliably? Because, I mean, let's be real here. If I'm going to be taking this type of setup and I am going to be looking to buy the bottom of that measured move with the stop, let's say, you know, a good 15 or 20 percent below the range, just roughly in the 4350s. If that's going to be the scenario, then I've got to assume that I'm going to be a low probability trader and that my reward must be high. That's the only way that it fits. So if we're looking at it from an entry point of around 4367 and a stop point, actually, let's get the actual numbers here. We've got a half, which is right here. So this would actually be 50% of a blow off through the lows. So if we cut that in half, that would be about 25%. So again, 20, 20% or so, this is 25 in this case. So if that's going to be my stop location and I'm entering in right about, right, right about here, then realistically, I've got to make sure that my targets fit. And if we put a two to one to the upside, that very obviously fits. Not only does a two to one fit, if we zoom this out just a little bit and look at a three to one, that one fits. Let's go to the four to one. And the four to one is the last stop before they finally start breaking above the previous swing high. So this fits a four to one trade all the way to the upside, risking very little. Now remember, this type of trade, you don't have to be very probabilistic. Utilizing trader's math a little bit, and if you're unsure as to how the, that works, there's a full video going over trader's math in the YouTube series. But the trader's math side of things here, if we were looking at this and we make, it, and, well, they made a three to one, so let's use those numbers because those are proven. If we were to utilize a three to one mentality, with the way that this is setting up, and let's say as an example, we were 30% accurate, right? 30% of the time, one, one third of the time, we actually get the bounce off of this, which I think is very low. But again, just for sake of argument, we're one third of the time, right? 30%. A little bit less than one third. 30 times out of 100, though, I'm making 300, while the other times, the other 60, or 70 rather, I'm losing 100. Well, 9,000 minus 7,000 is a positive 2,000. That's an incredibly bullish math. That's very, very bullish. That's a, a trade setup that basically should be taken every single time if it presents itself in this way. Because the trader's math is so in its favor that it would be ridiculous not to. Now, as far as a two to one objective goes, I think their stops are probably a little bit further down. They're likely underneath this major swing. And if we kind of mosey on out, we can see that that two to one lines up almost perfectly with a four to one of the larger move. Either way, one very obvious thing that's going on here is that the market is creating some very nice perpetual motion to the upside. And we can even utilize the same mindset with the other direction. After we had this corrective phase up, the first pulse to the upside, which was a two-legged move up, was right here. And let's change the color of this so that it stands out. Let's do red. 
Then we can take the same level, drag it up here, and sure enough, we've got a measured move corrective phase back up. What if we take this line and we move it over here? Oh, wait a minute. That's showing up too. Hmm. So if I'm going to go long down here, realistically, my likely objective might not necessarily want to go for a 2 to 1. Because, well, historically, this is telling me that my objective may need to be a little bit tighter. It's not that it can't run a little bit further, but history repeats itself, as we know with the markets. And given that this is the response, it would make sense to see the pullback begin sooner than later. And then a secondary drive to the upside after that. So in terms of the way that you're looking to approach this type of scenario, this fits beautifully, this one at least specifically, for a very nice reward versus risk all the way back up. And this is an incredible example of how you can use both as support and resistance, as targets, as objectives. These are so useful using these measured moves. It's ridiculous. If you're not paying attention to them already, you need to be. They're, they're all over the place. They're, they're such a crazy good guiding light that I would highly, highly recommend you at least venture into the measured move side of things if you haven't yet. That's going to do it for this one, though. I hope you found this one useful, interesting, entertaining, and maybe something you can add to your tool belt. Of course, as always, if you have questions, you can shoot those down in the comments below. Or if it's a little bit more of a detailed question, you can always send me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy, and we will see you all in the next one. Thanks.